Hello there, everyone, and welcome back to The Closet Historian and back to the space above the blue patterning table of doom. Indeed, my mandragora silk for the project is sitting just here along with my pattern because that is the project I'm currently working on. But seeing as none of my sewing is quite finished up for this week, but I still wanted to have a Thursday video out for you, I thought we could go ahead and look through some 1940s magazines. Now, these are not fashion magazines. These are Vogue pattern book magazines and a simplicity little preview magazine here as well. These are, you know, for home sewists, basically they're going through the preview of the patterns that will be available from each of these companies in the next season. And I have a couple of these simplicity previews. This is another one from July 1943, and then also a McCall's Style News home dressmaking little notebook. So we'll go through these pamphlets first. I will have everything we look at today scanned and up on my Pinterest. The link will be available in the description for this, so you can browse through them yourself as well. But let's start with these simplicity previews here. So I have, again, January 1944, and we have this lovely dress here on the front. She seems to be wearing green jewelry with a large Again, large, large clutch handbags here in the mid-40s. I love them. A large red hat to match with that. This is kind of like a halo style hat which perches up on the back of the head and creates this kind of halo effect around the face. Um, she's wearing her hair half up with that as well. But then the red handbag calling back to, of course, the red lipstick and the hat. But let's see what patterns they were advertising. We seem to have a shirt dress here, a very classic looking shirt dress. This one does have the yoke with a little bit of gathering here. This is a very simple modification to do. The shirt dress... I like how to make a shirt dress pattern here that I've done on the channel. I'll put a card up to that here. That's how to take the bodice and turn it into a, something that buttons down the front or with a little bit of a fold back collar, things like that. Um, that modification I show in the video is done on a uh, all-in-one sleeve bodice. This is done with a set-in sleeve bodice, just the regular standard bodice block. That modification will work on either block and therefore you could easily do that same transition uh, or transformation to a standard bodice block and get something very similar to this. This has an uh, almost A-line skirt shape here, but it's all done in gores as opposed to the traditional A-line. It does seem that like it has a second option to do that as sets of pleats as well at the waist. And then probably just a little matching belt with this. And then buttons punctuate these smart, simple lines on the next page here. Gotta love this tiny little like toy cowboy hat this gal's wearing with her striped ensemble. Of course, this print is done in rather Christmassy colors, but I wouldn't mind having a Kelly Green suit personally. Becoming lines are accented by the smart use of buttons. So they have this two-piece ensemble here. We may have a contrasting front panel, it says. Um, this is what done with a princess seam line. I have shown how to do that on the channel in a couple of my dressmaking videos before in my vest video, I believe, as well. So I will go ahead and link up to one of those here to show me working on princess seams. I am going to do a full video all about princess seams in the new year. On the next page of Pretty Frocks here, we have again the same dress that was on the cover. This has gathering along the sides here. This is actually very simple to do. Um, I haven't quite figured out the way to do it with this little tiny extension down onto the waist. I think it's actually simpler than I've been trying to make it, but um, to at least put the gathers here, um, you would just move the dart fullness into the side seam and then gather it instead of sewing those uh, pinched areas as darts. You just sew that in as gathers, gather this down to be the same measurement that it would be if you had put the dart in. Hopefully that makes sense to some of you. I will do some darts into gathers again on the channel coming up eventually here. Um, something I actually just showed how to do this style over on Patreon. So if you just can't wait, um, that video is over on my Patreon. If you'd like to see how to do the gathering of the waistline. This also has gathering up here on the shoulder. Um, how this would be done is kind of you would swing this, uh, maybe like let's start, if you had a side dart, you could swing that up into the shoulder line and use that gathering into a shape line like this. This actually wouldn't be a bad pattern to do a mock up of or like a um, demonstration of. So if you'd like to see this, so if you'd like to see a demo of this one, let me know. And then again, we have another dress utilizing a princess seam. This one is done with a full princess seam, so it does not have a waist seam here. This again is something I want to cover in the new year, how to do dresses with either darts at the waist, like double-ended darts at the waist, or a princess seam all the way down. It's not something I tend to do for myself. I just prefer having a waist Everything I, I make, I like to have a waist seam on it, so it's not something you see me make, but I will be covering that in the new year. And, th and this does have gathering at the neckline, which is something I have shown how to do here on the channel actually twice, but I will post the more recent one up in a card here. I'm going to use all my cards very quickly, so I'll have to put the rest of the links in the description as well. And you can see that she's wearing this with dress clips, so you can't beat that. And then this dress here, I'm assuming this is probably the same pattern number. Yes, 4856. Um, this, she has a brooch and matching dress slip going on here. But again, this is a little bit of a drop waist with the gathering along the waist here, just with a 
wrap front. This is a faux wrap front here. This also has a tulip sleeve, a puffed tulip layered sleeve here. And that is actually something also I have on my schedule coming up in January. So a lot of details in here so far that I actually already have on my schedule. So things that will be coming up soon. And then for Christmas furloughs over here, we have a very fun dress which is using texture as a contrast. So the whole dress is black, I'm assuming, um, but they've used a black satin at the waistline here to kind of create a faux, almost corsety looking effect, which is very fun. Again, this is just a shirtwaist style bodice. This is probably closed here. I assume this actually has a side zipper or a back zipper perhaps, because it doesn't look like it actually closes down the center front on the skirt area, um, but it just has that shirtwaist style up here at the top. Again, very similar to how a pattern for like this dress would be made. You know, it's just doing it in a different material. This is very similar to this. It just has the accent panels thrown in as well. And then this dress is very fun too. This almost has like a kind of, I don't know, Robin Hood made Marion kind of look going on, I think. Um, but it has these little bows tucked up at the sleeves and then this under bust gathering. This is similar enough to the um, other 1940s catalog style I showed here on the channel. Um, it just has gathering at the waistline again, but I did, I have shown how to do the gathering under the bust like this. So I will again link that, uh, that video that has a similar ish. You could adapt from that video to a style like this quite simply. Um, and I will link that video below. Again, we see this little bit of a drop waist here, a style you really don't see me doing. But this one is with a pleated skirt and then again, princess kind of double ended dart here. And then I really do enjoy, however, the color blocking that's happening here. And the idea of wearing a necklace over a high neckline like this, I don't often try this in my own wardrobe, trying to wear a necklace over my high necklines, but I really need to try it out more often because I have a lot of dresses with high necklines and I have necklaces I don't wear enough. This one is actually another simple enough modification to do. Um, I've shown how to do cuff sleeves like this before. I will try and put the video where I do this style of sleeve in the description as well. Um, and then this is just a yoke here with a little bit of trim along it, which I kind of show how to do this in the um, Edwardian inspired top, the Carmine shirt pattern, uh, the Carmine shirt video. I show how to do a yoke um, and you could easily just insert a little bit of ruffle in there when you're sewing that. Same with this cuff. You could easily sew on a little bit of matching ruffle with that kind of thing as well. And I do have another issue of preview in my collection. This is Simplicity's July 1943 edition. And again, we can see matchy match accessories as we know I always like. We have this giant cartwheel hat, delicious hat here, and it matches the handbag, which all are pulled from the pink in the print of her dress. Um, so just styling suggestions here. Again, they're just coloring these artworks. Are, are they trying to do that like realistically? I don't know, but the suggestion of having matching accessories, it's always something I, of course, key into because I love a matching accessory set myself. Let's see if we have more details of these patterns inside. Clothes for the coming attractions, it says. Seems we have some more juniors and children's wear here. These probably are juniors dresses on this side. Simple to make. Gay flowers on a pretty dress. I mean, you can't beat that, can you? This has a little bit of a peaked waistline here. Um, again, this is a modification you can easily make to your bodice pattern. You, when you're adding something like this, it's like an inch and a half an inch. You don't have to worry about <laughs> like it not fitting anymore. If you extend your uh, bodice pattern a tiny bit in the front like that, you won't cause any damage. Um, but this one just has a gathered skirt. This is also gathered in the way that I often like to do things where the center front is still smooth and the gathers are focused here on the sides. Um, not all the way into the side seam, but just pinched in between. So you have that flat front still, which is nice. But again, Shirtwaist style, just collarless. This one you can see they have moved the dart. The dart at the waist, it looks like they're using it as a tuck, but they moved the other bit of dart fullness up into a dart in the shoulder here. And you could easily finish this sort of neckline with either a lining or a facing. Again, we have here a full princess line dress. So something with a square neckline this time. Not something I prefer myself, I've learned over the years, but still a cute dress nonetheless. It does look a little bit more juniors to me. Maybe that's why I don't like these style lines as much. And then a little, I always call these little sets suits, but they usually call them two-piece dresses. Um, the difference seems to be how many layers of inner lining you have going on, uh, like how much tailoring is happening. Uh, so like dressmaker sets are more like two-piece dresses and like tailored suits are more like suits, but whatever. Um, but we know how I like to make these kind of things. You could easily use my uh, cotton jacket uh, video that I have here on the channel to make something like this and just add on fancy pockets as well. And then we have patterns with few pieces, which mean three yards or less, so can't beat that. Quick and fast and economical. Love it. But this dress is a super classic 40s dress right here. I mean, 
doesn't get much more 1940s than that. And it is, it is very basic. This is a A-line skirt with a center front seam. The bodice has a center front seam. And then all of the dart fullness, actually some of the dart fullness has been left in the waist and used as gathering again. Um, but the rest of the dart fullness has been made into these tucks up here at the shoulder. Again, simple enough to do. You just swing those darts up into the shoulder and use them as tucks instead of as a dart. Um, and again, they're just using a self ruffle detail on that. And then this dress is even simpler because it has an all in one sleeve. So we're not setting in any sleeves here. This is just a sweetheart neckline that again, probably is finished with a facing and then a gathered skirt on this. Again, they still, ha still have a center front seam on this. That's probably to be able to fit it onto three yards or less. Um, and also his historically, or like uh, retro fabrics were narrower. So nowadays I usually buy designer fabrics. Those come in 50 inches wide. 54 inches wide. Um, fabrics back then were usually under 45, um, if at, at all 45. Uh, a lot of vintage fabrics are only 36 inches wide. So um, to be able to fit your pattern pieces on there, sometimes they had to have center front seams, whereas today we can eliminate those if you wanted to. This next aqua blue dress here has a little bit of dart manipulation going on as well. You can see here that the darts are uh, sewn halfway and then left as a tuck for the rest of it for both the bust darts and the um, darts on the skirt here. So they're sewn a little bit and then the last end of it is left a tuck so that it comes out almost like a like half dart half pleat situation. Um, but they are, all, are also angled so the skirt darts are angled instead of straight down they angled out towards the side a little bit and again this releases into an a-line skirt shape as opposed to a pencil skirt. And then the darts on the bodice again are angled a little bit as well so that just creates a little bit of a v-ing detail again probably helping with the illusion of a smaller waist. And then we have another faux wrap dress here. I'm doubting it's a real wrap. It just says smart lines on a simple dress. But again, this has a princess seamed like gourd skirt and then a faux wrap top here that's made as a shirt dress. Again, not with buttons, but just that comes over enough that it just overlaps. And again, this has the shoulder yoke and then gathering here. Now for charming frocks in cool shears, we have this great black dress here with these layered, it's a, just a completely a gathered skirt, um, but it's got these tiers of tiny ruffles on it. Very pretty. And this has got shearing up at the shoulders, which is something I've never tried before. I've never tried shearing anything, but again, you could use gathering and it would look very similar. Or if you know how to do shearing, you could do that. Again, we have another shirt waist style bodice on this one, again, with gathering into a yoke. It's a very common detail for both blouses and for dresses in the 1940s um, to have this either short or even lower yoke. And sometimes they're pointed or more of a Western look to have that gathering up into the yoke. Um, but again, this is just adding a bow to that sort of thing, adding ruffles to the placket, um, all just easy, easy enough modifications, just getting fancy with the trimmings. And again, we have shearing to gather the center of this skirt and it has a funny bit of a exaggerated winged pocket over the hips here. And then again, another two piece dress, but really of course, I just want this cute little doll tipped hat here. Um, but this is another two piece dress, sort of like jackety thing and matching skirt. Again, this skirt is a gourd A-line skirt. And then here we have again, a double ended dart shaping the waist here with then gathering into the sides, um, almost like rouging or shearing on more modern garments that you see. And then this just has a big square collar with a bigger ruffle even <laughs> on top of it. This is uh, a sailor style collar, I would assume. I assume the back looks similar. Yes, it does. It's a sailor collar. So this is like a flat drafted sailor collar. If you want me to make a flat collars video, let me know. Um, it's quite easy. Um, you just, cause you don't have to worry about like how much the collar stands up and curls at the shoulder or anything like that. It's all just done very flat. So um, we can do that sailor collar sometime if you would like. And a few more cool cottons. These are for the KP. I don't know what a KP is, but it's been lost in time. But I think this is a convenient shopping bag for busy days. Oh, we can make big tote bag. Um, but I think these are more like, yeah, house dresses, gay house dress and convenient potholder mitt Oh yes, there's the pot holder that matches the dress and it's also connected with like a rope to the belt so you wouldn't lose your pot holder because, you know, where the other rope is to tie her to the stove, we're not sure, but I mean, at least it's not pictured. The center front closures uh, of a shirt waist kind of style here and then the wrap dress style over here. Um, again, with the gathering of the shoulder again, so much of that. Um, but these have these great little ruffles <laughs> as part of the sleeve, which is quite fun. And then some cool sun dresses and pert bolero. Oh my, I don't look very pert in a bolero personally, unfortunately, but this is a very cute, uh, again, this is like two darts. You have the waist dart and then the shoulder dart. I don't always see darts on boleros, but it's kind of nice to see this actually, because I see so many dartless boleros and I'm like, in what world of not being a D cup, can you get away with a dartless bolero? But good for you if you can, but I like seeing having 
the full four darted front on a bolero here, because if I make boleros, I have to have darts. Um, but then again, this is a gourd skirt with the pockets set into the gore seam here, and the sleeveless version, or actually this is probably just the dress that goes underneath this bolero here as well. She's playing croquet or something. Tennis. And again, another shirt style dress with the top being like a blouse and then the skirt just being a pleated A-line. And then this one has a little bit more going on. Um, we have moved the darts up into like the armhole area, but then created a sort of strap and that gathers into there. This is another one that would be good to demo. Um, if you want to see me demo something like this, say green gardening dress and I will know what you mean. And we have a few more options here on the back. Again, more two piece dresses and ensembles. Again, that yoke with the gathering, such a common detail. Again, the tux, same sort of idea. Um, and then the princess lines that meet up with the skirt having that same line as well. So more things that are coming up here on the channel next year. All right, let's see what McCall's Style News has in store for us. McCall's Style News for home dressmaking, August 1943. For economy, do your sewing with McCall's printed patterns. For true economy, just copy the design and make the pattern yourself on the back of some paper you have laying around. Now that is the cheapest option. So here we are in 1943. We have some great hats going on here. This little tilted number with a lot of veiling, more veiling on this sort of pillbox on the back of the head here. And then we have these giant kind of cartwheel shallow crowned hats that we know I love so, so much. But a lot of interesting pattern details going on here. Um, so on this dress, we can see that the dart fullness has been eliminated probably into this front panel and then into these tucks here that culminate in a bow. But this is something that could be done with dart manipulation, no problem with flat pattern drafting. Again, we have a gourd A-line skirt here. And similar to that aqua dress on the back of that last pattern magazine, we have tucks here at the shoulder and then also tucks at the waist to shape the waistline as well. Again, this is probably an A-line skirt with a bit of extra in the middle to be put into these tucks. Um, and then it has these little bows to hold it front. Again, I think it's uh, probably a side zip closure on this one. Yeah, none of these have center back zippers. We all know how I like a center back zipper, but the 40s were not as interested. And then this dress has, again, a yoke, but it's a little bit more of a shaped curvy yoke. Again, the like side dart or some of the dart fullness has been put up into gathers into that yoke. And then that yoke itself has a little bit of a tuck going on to put some sort of like a jewel or knot at the center. And then the skirt here is off, obviously sewn on separately. So there's, there is a waist seam here because we have these gathers for the waist darts. And then we have this skirt yoke. Um, I don't think I've done a yoked skirt on the channel yet, but you can have yokes on your bodices and you can also have yokes on your skirts. So something to do in the future. And again, more yokes with gathering up here and then shoulder gathering here as well. It's just a very common way to control dart fullness is to use it as shoulder gathers instead. And our toy hatted cute little gal over here is wearing a very great little black dress for daytime, I suppose. A wraparound dress beautifully draped, the easiest to fit at the waistline and hips. Oh, it's interesting. It says three and five eighths of a yard of 39 inch crepe. So they want you to make this one in crepe. And again, they mentioned that the fabric only comes in 38 inches wide or 39 inches wide. So um, you can tell that the fabrics were not as wide as they are now. But then again, I would rather have narrow crepe and be able to have crepe at all than now where you just can't find any. <sighs> not that I'm sore about it. This again, the gathering at the waistline is done in tucks that release so that they uh, look almost like gathering, but they are actually tucks that release. That's where the dart fullness has gone here. And then on this underside piece, some dart fullness has been used up in the shoulder in the same way with sewn down uh, darts or tucks that release at the ends. Um, and then this is like a wrap style draped skirt with again, tucks at the top. Very, very, very cute. I would love to have this dress. The young viewpoint and close to the limelight. So we have some juniors wear here. Again, we have princess cut, entirely princess cut dresses here. Um, and then princess cut lines on this little jacket as well with again gathering over the belly which is kind of a strange place to put it but you you go ahead sweetie um, I think I'd rather have the gathering in the sides even but you know they're gonna do what they're gonna do um, and then this princess seam dress here to me I don't something about them just seems so like late 70s 80s or something to me I don't know I, I think my brain is tainted by other influences here also this hat I just noticed is super cute um but it has a gathered little detailed sleeve. I should do like a video of like weird sleeves sometime. Uh, but again, this princess line has the addition of these gathers here. Um, when you create the princess line, you are eliminating darts. But if you wanted to keep some of that dart fullness and use it as gathering, I'm sure that is possible. Now we have some interestingly shaped yolks. This one has a kind of scalloped shape yoke. Again, simple enough to do. And then a, again, pretty standard shirt dress here and here. 
same dress pattern. This one just has a dart at the shoulder and this one has that yoke and gathering again. Then we have more shirt dresses over here. It's very ubiquitous style in the 1940s. I just don't happen to like it on myself, so you don't see me making them. But um, this brown one's quite nice, honestly. I don't know, I don't know. I, I love blouses and skirts, and yet as soon as it's made out of the same fabric, I don't know why I don't like it as much. Shirt frocks, not shirt dresses, shirt frocks. We do have some mommy and me mother-daughter sets here on this next page. So dresses for your preteen and you, or your toddler, well, not toddler. I don't know how, six, seven, I don't know how old these children are. My uh, ability to gauge ages of children is non-existent because I just try and avoid them as much as possible and therefore I have learned very little about them. Five wonderful ideas for your summer sewing. So we have a cushy looking robe here and like a pajama loungy set here, two-piece pajama, wide leg trouser basically in like a flannel, which would be very fun to make, to have as loungy pants to wear around the house, honestly. I need to make some more flannels next year, perhaps. But I quite like this casual outfit over here. She's obviously doing the shopping for the day here. Here's a wonderful pair of new slacks with tapering legs and draped hip line. They button down one side, two buttons on belt, two on the hip. This has side button closure on these. It's nice. I love making uh, 1940s trousers with the side closure instead. It's just so nice to not have to have it in the front or back. And then finally today, I think we're going to go ahead and look through my newest addition into my ephemera collection. And that is this Vogue pattern book from 1943 as well. So a lot of 1943 today. We have a free bonnet pattern in here with a 25 ways to wear a bonnet suggestions. And also 10 way ways with a black dress, 10 ways with a brown dress, and eight pages of baby clothes. That's, that's eight pages too many in my book, but that's all right. One of the nice things about the Vogue pattern books is that they have usually Vogue photographers shooting them. So they have some great photography inside and they have a lot of great styling. So even just this outfit on the front here, we have this white dress with a matching wool beret, a red and white silk scarf tied at the neckline. We can just tell that there's a gold earring here and actually something gold pinned onto the um, beret as well. She's got a chunky bracelet or two here in gold as well. White knit gloves with this that are sitting here on the table. And then another like kind of brooch watch chain sort of thing going on here. So lots of styling notes. It's mostly white, just the accent of red in the lipstick scarf and then her red nail polish, of course. And there's actually a red handbag. You can see kind of just in the background here. So she's got a red handbag with this mixing just that red and white and gold. Look carefully at this sketch because it gives you a composite picture of summertime 1943. All black baby for summer. And the dress is a sim slim silhouette, short sleeves, low pretty neckline. The color in quotes is black. The accessories are half hat, long jersey gloves, simple opera pumps. All can be worn from 12 a.m. to p.m. Vogue design number 4477. Can we talk about this sheer hat? Oh, I adore it. You can see that this was photographed by Horst here. That's maybe Horst P. Horst, um, a great fashion photographer from the 1940s. But this gal has a sheer gathered dress on. You can just see her slip through it. How scandalous. Wearing this with long, almost like elbow length gloves here, a large patent leather clutch with a like diamante looking brooch on it. And then this stunning sheer straw low crowned hat. Ooh, and then pearls, of course, which I would skip. But uh, the hat here. If I could have that, that'd be great. Sheer black, faintly worldly, fatally feminine. The sheer black dress with high round gathered neckline. Again, we've seen how to do this detail on the channel before. Brief ruffled sleeves, highlighted with black satin gloves and bag. Oh, back satin gloves and bag, I see. It looks sh so shiny, it looks like patent. And a wide, wide hat by Alfreda. Yeah, where do I get that hat? Here's rewarding work for your needles, both knitting and sewing. So they have also the patterns for the knitwear here available in Vogue Knitting, which was a completely different magazine. But again, styling notes here. We have some very quite practical shoes here. This is like a one inch heel, kind of loafer looking leather shoes, uh, white gloves paired with most of these outfits. Yeah, all of them seem to have white gloves. This gal's wearing one glove and not the other. Don't know what she's done done there, but uh, oh well. And then very like closely fitted white cap hats going on here. And then this gal's got more of a structured beret. Satin highlights. So here's that satin envelope clutch. A really handsome bag to pair with the satin gloves or the satin poof hat. Pin a jewel on it. I guess that's why they can pin a brooch on it because it's actually satin, not leather. And then satin gloves, expensive looking. Make them from Vogue pattern. Whew, can you imagine sewing satin gloves? Sewing gloves to begin with sounds like a nightmare. Sewing slippery satin gloves sounds like a strange, strange kind of nightmare. But of course my favorite has got to be this satin vest and the suggestion of colors for it. Satin waistcoat, like a racing silks. This waistcoat is most effective when it is most brilliant in color. Try emerald green, fuchsia, purple, or electric blue. I'll take 
all of those colors, honestly. Well, not fuchsia. I don't look good in fuchsia, but purple, electric blue, emerald. Yes. Then we have a satin cummerbund. Of course, this quilted satin jacket, very cute and looks quite cozy. Um, and then a big satin pouch handbag, highly decorative, highly convenient. A big evening bag like this. Yeah, you could fit your iPod, iPad mini in there. I don't think that's what she was thinking, but you know, why not? Then we have this little satin poof hat with a circle of veiling and then she's wearing a giant brooch so I can get behind that. For day to day and tomorrow, we have these options here. Again, I just really get distracted by all the hats because like, look how good this brown hat is. And this black one, they're all so cute. It's distracting. Also, pattern gloves is so fun. See, if you do have the patience to make gloves, you could make them that match the trim on your dress. And I do see the appeal in that, but I'm just too lazy to make gloves ever. I'm never doing it. I'm sorry. And another giant handbag. They always show the most giant handbags in these, and it makes me feel uh, like very justified in buying giant 1980s clutch handbags to stand in for 40s ones. And then we have my favorite two of this entire magazine. First of all, we have this outfit, which is just, if anyone can make me a faux fur wrap like that, does anyone know where I can get really nice black faux fur made into a gorgeous stole like that? So I can have this very much like just came from my third husband's funeral look, you know, it's just so good. And she's got this turned fun hat that matches this green dress. I'm not sure if you can see on camera here, I'll have to probably put in the scan. But this dress has a like zigzag angled effect. This is a two, um, like this probably does have a waist seam, I'm guessing. Uh, this skirt continues the line, but is probably separate and sewn together here at the waist. But you've got the darts moved into all this gathering here. Then this front uh, wrap style folds over to create the collar. It's just very cute. Um, and then this here is done with like a yoke and then the skirt is gathered into that. I really want to make this one. I'm going to try and make this one next year for sure. I do also like this dress quite a lot. It's got a yoke that the dart fullness is like manipulated into. And then there's darts here going into a V at the center front. And then they meet with the darts at the skirt that are V'd. And then what's interesting about these darts is actually they are like stitched in. So they are external, I think, external darts. They're done on the outside as opposed to done on the inside. So you can see the dart fullness like a little flap or pleat on the outside. And then this is just a really high neckline with a slit. Uh, I think I showed that recently in that green dress and that's just held together with like a class B button thing or like perhaps a brooch for more versatility. And again, pink flowers in her hair, pink gloves, love it. So pretty, these giant black saucer hats, love them. This dress has quite a lot going on. I never make anything this complex. I just don't see the reason to because I don't like to torture myself. But some of the fullness is used up here in shoulder gathers. Then we have a sweetheart neckline, center front seam that goes into this wildly shaped piece. Um, this is a, an all-in-one, there's no waist seam here. So some gathering is done over the bust. Some is up at the uh, shoulder line. Then we have the gathering for the skirt here in the center, but this is just very mad looking. Um, it's possible. I'm not saying it can't be done from flat, flat pat, leave it. I'm not saying it can't be done from flat pattern drafting. It certainly could be, but it would require a couple of mock-ups for something as complex as this. But this dress here has a short V-neck and then there's a line that comes down like a faux wrap that has gathering into it. And then there's another line lower down that has more gathering into it. And then of course that line again is contrasted or um, matched up with the same sort of detail in the skirt that this one had. Um, and then there's like a tuck into the sleeve as well. I could see modifying this to something that I would wear as well. But I can't talk about every one of these. Darn, these Vogue designs are just so complex that I could barely touch on each one. Um, this one here, again, has like a little tuck at the top of this almost shirtwaist style, and then it completely transforms and has this lowered yoke with, again, all the gathering into it. So this is simple enough. Uh, forget the shirt dress portion of it for now. If you imagine this is all just smooth. Imagine this as a low yoke that goes through the apex here. You can see it goes through the apex and then all the dart fullness from either of the darts, anything that pointed towards the apex before has been swung into gathering along that yoke. This also has a center front seam. And then like after you had done those modifications, then add the buttons <laughs> to this front portion, because of course it doesn't go all the way down to the waist. It's kind of a lot, multi-step situation. And here's our 10 ways with a black dress. So 10 different outfits with a black dress. Some uh, interesting things going on here with these very tall gloves. 
in this rather funny pose. I think her arms are just a little bit too long, but that's all right. But this is just showing different ways to wear the same black dress. So with pink gloves and a shoulder bag, um, with pattern gloves and a matching hood, with a scarf clipped to the front of the neckline, with a funny little like uh, ski hat and a matching ribbon belt. Uh, again, it's a lot of just like wear it with different gloves and this time with a brooch. Of course, this time there's like a couple of scarves looped through the belt. It's a choice. This seems to have that little satin quilted jacket on over it, which is very cute, or one of those silk waistcoats. And then same sort of idea over here with a brown dress. I'll let you take a closer look at these in the scans. PM pretty. So this is actually the same dress that we saw earlier. That's this same pattern here, done in a print, of course. Disarmingly young, this dress has gathers in the front of the blouse and a skirt, a high round neck and ruffled shoulders. It's almost hard to see what's going on here. It's almost easier to see in the black. But there's gathering up here at the high neck, which again, I have shown how to do. But then there's also gathering down here at the center front waist. So if you wanted to do this, you could easily take, like if you have a two dart bodice block, take the side dart and use it for the gathering up the neckline and take the waist dart and use it for the gathering at the waist. But lots of complexity and gathering going on in some of these designs, especially this cool, pretty dress is particularly effective in sheer crepe. Um, <laughs> we have a lot going on here. So again, we have lines coming in from the arm side that have gathering into them. Then we have gathering at the waist, meeting up with that halfway. There's a center front seam here. And then there is a waist seam, love that. And then this is kind of a yoked gourd skirt with extra gathering in the side gores. It's a lot going on. Mostly I just want that bow print fabric. She kind of has a clamshell from the back halo hat here with a bit of veiling too, which is very pretty. I always want the hats. I get distracted by them in these pages. This is a very funny little sleeve we have up on here on this dress. It's got like, I assume this is just like a tube of fabric, but then it's just gathered down to make this little sleeve. It's like very gathered. It would almost be bulky underneath the arm unless it was a very lightweight fabric. This dress here has gathering along the center front seam here. So there's gathering next to the bust. Once again, this is quite easy to do. Again, this is, you know, gathering that's shaping from the apex. So it's just, instead of having your darts down here into the waist, so that you can put your darts up here and then use that as gathering. Um, and then again, the sides are pulled over, but that again, isn't too bad. If you imagine the dress pattern is just like this and then it's a little bit big and then it just gets pulled down. Again, something that I can show how to do here on the channel sometime. Then we have our 25 ways with a bonnet, different ways to style this bonnet pattern that they've included here. I will of course scan this uh, page, but I can't say that I'm particularly interested in a bonnet hat, sadly. We have some baby clothes. Again, sorry, not my area. Mommy and me outfits again. Well, everybody can be in a little gray suit, but I'm much more interested in the yellow, let's face it. Yellow and black, I love that kind of thing. And again, these hats, like look at that one. Mm, so yummy. The scalloped edge on this one, this dress is actually pretty easy to draft, so I'll focus on that for a second. This is the wrap in the front, the gathering up the shoulder, it doesn't even have a yoke, it just says gathering up into the shoulder, so that's where the darts have been moved. It actually looks like there might be a dart here, so probably the side dart was moved up into gathering at the shoulder and the waist dart was left where it was. And then the scalloped edge, you would just finish that with either a facing or a lining in that same shape so you could get that all turned out nicely, but it's a lot of clipping the curves on the inside to make that stay put. This dress here is actually quite lovely as well. It's got almost a cowl neckline with that same, like pinching the sides into almost a sweetheart cowl combo here. And then again, this is almost like a yoke where the top half of this is sewn into a waist and like all in one waist and uh, skirt yoke here with then gathering in the sides. But lots of pretty stuff happening here. Again, something like this is simple enough actually, this little tab here makes it a little bit more irritating, but if you just had a center front seam here, imagine, and then you put the tab on top afterwards, maybe hand sewed it down, it'd be pretty easy. Um, just, again, using all the dart fullness, and putting it all in between the bust and the front and gathering those down. Also, this lady has snacks, so 10 points. <clears throat> the little dress. I'm not sure I'm a fan of this look. It's gonna be a no from me. The hats are great. This one, the darts are put up into the shoulder. But then this is done as a probably all-in-one piece, I assume. Could be have a waist seam underneath that belt, we'll never know. But this is a uh, simple enough to do with a waist seam, actually. Uh, this has like three pleats put in here along this wrap front of this dress. Again, an advertisement for my favorite early pattern drafting book here. 
that is a quick flip through of Vogue pattern book here. Again, I will have this um, completely scanned and up hopefully uh, by the time the video comes out, if not a little bit after. So check the next day. If you, if you go onto Pinterest and it's not there yet, it is on the way there. I usually have to edit the scans a little bit to get the color to be correct in Photoshop before I put them up on Pinterest. So sometimes it gives me a little bit of a delay. So I hope you enjoyed seeing this selection of 1940s sewing themed ephemera today. I have a lot of sewing to do myself, so I better get back to it so I can show you what I've been up to next week. See you then.